This is the Philadelphia Flower Show, the oldest and grandest celebration of floral design in the world. The Pennsylvania Horticultural Society has orchestrated this internationally respected tribute to the floral arts for nearly 200 years, only pausing for world wars. The 250,000 annual attendees of the Philly Flower Show come to admire surreal floral scapes and fairy tales woven by the country's premier floral designers. The show is evolving technologically as well as culturally, employing projection mapping and floral sculptures alongside an ever-expanding roster of women, queer communities, and florists of color. We receive a really warm welcome um, and they were really glad to have us. To our knowledge, we were the first all-Black team that participated. We did learn that there was another team that was an all-Black team that participated, and they had a beautiful installation as well. And we actually connected when we were um, designing our exhibits and supporting one another. So it was just great to see um, just the racial diversity that is being included in the Philadelphia Flower Show. The introduction of the Mexican poinsettia during the 1829 Flower Show imported and democratized the joy of choosing and gifting flowers into mainstream American culture. Floristry became accessible for people who could access land. People like Brianna Taylor. This is my first time ever being at the flower show. I've never even attended. A lot of planning has been going on. I've been really focused, making a lot of lists and uh, just getting ready. So very nervous, but excited for everything to start. My love for gardening and flowers started at a super young age. My family purchased about 12 acres of land um, in Lower Delaware when they moved from Virginia to Delaware. And my grandmother allowed me to have a small garden on her piece of the land when I was little. That is where like the root of it all started. Gardening and going in the woods and finding flowers and being outside tilling the land with my dad, that was like one of my first favorite activities. Brianna was really adventurous and you had to find things for Brianna to do. I decided to start growing flowers and just keep her busy outside. So that's when she started loving sunflowers and cut and come back zinnias. She loved being outside. We often talk about the land and how significant it is and how important it is. My grandmother and her siblings, when they moved, they just thought it was a great opportunity and knew that they could leave a legacy for us. Brianna's family is unique in America. More often than not, the trend for Black American families has been to lose land through discriminatory laws and legal loopholes, leading to a loss of millions of acres of land over the 20th century. Today, Black families like Brianna's hold less than 2% of all the land in the U.S., down from 14% in the 1920s. A lot of us fell into floral design in a very organic way. That is one of the first relationships that we did have, was with the land, tending to it and growing, and I think it's just an extension mm -hmm. of what we are, what we have done and worked with in the past. My maternal grandmother passed away on Valentine's Day, and so I always wanted to honor her by giving my mom flowers on that day. I would just go to the grocery store, find my own bouquets, break them down, put them back together, get some ribbon and a new vase, and it literally looks like I went to the florist. Other people started catching on to the fact that I was doing that and asking me to do it for their moms and their grandmothers. And it kind of just spiraled out of control. Um, I had no intention of opening a um, brick and mortar store. I had no intention of creating the Bloom Wagon at all. I was literally just trying to make my mom smile. Based on the research that I have done, Black florists make up about 2% of the floral industry. And that's not Black women florists, that's Black florists all together. I mean, in our organization, we engage daily with about 300 to 500 Black women florists. I'm the only person that I know that does like a waterproof floral handbag where you can build your arrangement on the inside of it. Emily O'Malley, who works for the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, reached out to me and she was like, I love these floral handbags and we would love to have the floral handbag on Artisan Row. Outside of like being here, I've never met a black forest. 
A lot of people are not afforded the opportunity of having a garden outside, having land, having a yard to do those things and to like get your hands dirty. But there are now gardening clubs and you know opportunities to do that. I met a couple of black florists that are here. Posh and Bloom, they're right across from me. Black Girl Florist, which did an exhibit over in the main hall. We started Black Girl Florist in the height of the racial turmoil in the summer of 2020. I wanted to create a place where people can shop Black for flowers. I want to meet and get to know florists who look like me. And I knew we were out here doing great things, but I wanted us to be able to connect. It grew and developed into building relationships with existing flower organizations where essentially they would reach out to us to participate in their events and their meetings. What do you think are some of the barriers for access to land for Black families? I think part of it is information. I think the knowledge of the availability of land. And then the second piece would just be education on tending the land. What does that look like in our society? This is, was our first time participating in the flower show. And it was such an exciting, exciting um, event to be a part of. For many florists like Brianna, commitment to gardening is not just about temporary beauty. Several generations of American families have tended the land planting and crossbreeding and encouraging sprouts to bloom. The flower show has been such a wild ride from like start to like now. And I'm so happy to be here experiencing this and meeting other people and just really getting the Bloom Wagon's name out there. I really want to purchase more land and open a wedding venue. That really is my, my dream to just buy a couple acres of land, get a building on it, make it nice and pretty, and I could just be the full service floral designer right there. Bouquets spread love no matter who you are, if you know each other, strangers or not, where you come from. Flowers literally just brighten everyone's day and spread love. For more information about Brianna Taylor's Bloom Wagon, Black Girl Florists, the Philadelphia Flower Show, and more, check out our links below.